First, we figured out who was statistically the strongest Pokemon. Then, we figured out who was situationally the strongest Pokemon, capable of dealing the most damage in a single attack. Now, it's time to complete this trilogy and use all the information gained over those first two episodes to build the perfect Pokemon. I joked during the last episode that it was possible to deal enough damage to kill a god. Well, today, we build its replacement. It's actually not that serious. We're just, uh, we're, we're, making a, we're making a real strong Pokemon here. Before we get into the actual video though, I wanted to address something that's come up a bunch since the release of my first video, Finding the Strongest Pokemon. It seems like the comments largely fell into three camps. People letting me know that they were glad YouTube recommended the video to them, and real talk, thank you all so much. You all are the best. I have been absolutely blown away by the support on the channel lately. Before that video came out, I had been stuck around 400 subscribers for a long time. And at the time of writing, we've passed 2,000, and that is honestly insane. The second was a relatively small, but still surprisingly significant portion of the people telling me that it looked like Lionel Messi, famous soccer player? What? But aside from that, there was one question that came up time and time again. If this is actually an accurate list of the strongest Pokemon, where is Zacian? For those unfamiliar, Zacian is the mascot legendary of Pokemon Sword. It's the one that ripped off that one boss from Dark Souls, which ripped off that one meme of the dog with the sword in its mouth. I wasn't aware of this, but apparently Zacian's crown form is the strongest Pokemon that the franchise has ever seen, and it caused like a whole bunch of problems for competitive players and whatnot, and yet it didn't appear anywhere on my top 10. This confused a lot of people, but there's actually a perfectly good explanation as to why Zacian wasn't mentioned and wasn't in the video at all. Cause it wasn't on the damn list! I said in the video that the list I was using included Pokemon up through Generation 7, and adding in the Generation 8 Pokemon would have taken way too long, so I just made some throwaway joke about toxic Generation 8 Twitter discourse and called it a day. Now apparently, this was a mistake, because Zacian has some serious stands. Or haters, I honestly can't tell. And you know what, looking at it, yeah, you're probably right. Zacian does seem like a very strong Pokemon, maybe even the best. It's Steel Fairy type, which has the best resistances in the game, it has insane attack, and its ability Intrepid Sword gives it a free attack boost at the start of every battle, which... Seems like pretty good, not like game breaking to me. Download has always been an ability for a while, but apparently this thing is just insane. And you know what? I'll take your word for it. But quite frankly, after this whole ordeal, I'm a little sick and tired of Zacian. I'm tired of people calling it the Bret Hart of Pokemon, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Because while Zacian might be the strongest Pokemon right now, I can do better. Richard, my lab coat. You still don't have the, it's been two weeks and you still didn't get the lab coat. Just go on Amazon, look up lab coat and hit ship to here. You don't even have to go out and get it. No, I don't care about supply chain issues. It's, it's literally a white coat. So in order to build the perfect Pokemon, we first need to understand what makes a Pokemon strong in the first place. I talked about it in more detail in my strongest Pokemon video that I keep referencing. So I'll make it quick here. In general, we want to look at their base stats and base stat distribution, type combination, ability, and moveset. I'm going to try and build something that excels in all of these categories while also staying somewhat realistic. It would be real easy to say, eh, yeah, just give it 10 trillion in every stat and an ability that makes it invincible, call it a day, but that's lame. I want to build something that could actually appear in a Pokemon game, so I also won't be resorting to any obscure gimmicks like Shedinjo with Sturdy or something like that, because I'm saving that for another video. Let's start off with something simple, type. I determined in a previous video that the type combination with the most resistances is Steel and Fairy, so it seems like a pretty obvious jumping off point. 
And, and so that's the, the point we'll be jumping off from. Look, I couldn't figure out a good way to end this section. Next, let's go back to basics. Base stats. Get it? Get it? Base? Basic? Man, entomology is crazy. At this point, we all know that Pokemon is a game of math, and the base stats are the driving factor behind that. There are six different base stats in total, and each one controls a different aspect of a Pokemon. The easiest to understand is speed. If your speed stat is higher than your opponent's, you go first. HP is also pretty clear. It determines how many hit points you have, or basically how many hits you can take and keep on kicking. Attack and defense determine how much damage you deal and take from physical attacks, and special attack and special defense are the same for special attacks, which is generally more like ranged attacks if you wanted to think about it that way. We're building the strongest Pokemon. So the most obvious thing to maximize in terms of stats is raw damage output. This means that we want to focus on our attack or our special attack, but we probably don't need both. So this brings us to our first question. Which is better? Should a Pokemon be dropping fools with stone cold stunners left and right or blasting away at a distance? When I first started to look into it, the answer seemed pretty obvious because for whatever reason, Game Freak has a personal vendetta against physical attackers. Looking at my old spreadsheet and crunching some numbers, there are significantly more Pokemon with a defense of 90 or above compared to special defense. Pokemon with higher defenses also tend to have more HP than their special counterparts. Specially defensive Pokemon also tend to be of types with less resistances, meaning they're taking the full brunt of an attack more often. Look, I even made some charts to prove it. To make matters even worse, there are also a whole bunch of abilities, items, and status conditions that specifically target physical attackers. Intimidate lowers the attack of your opponent's Pokemon whenever you hit the field, and there's nothing like this for special attackers. Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet damage an opponent if they hit you with only a physical move, or a move that makes physical contact. I know they're not always one and the same, but they usually are. And status conditions like Burn and Confusion disproportionately harm physical attackers when compared to their special counterparts. What I'm saying is, special attackers tend to have a much easier go of it. It seems like Game Freak subscribes to the brains over brawn philosophy, which, you know, means a lot. I'm, I'm, it... So it seems pretty clear to me, if we want to build the perfect Pokemon, let's juice that special attack to the max and dump our attack faster than our perfect Pokemon will inevitably be. Not so fast, bucko! The benefits of special attackers might be more obvious at a first glance, but when you start digging into the moves themselves, the playing field starts to even out a bit. For starters, a lot of the most powerful special attacks like Thunder, Hydro Pump, and Focus Blast have relatively low accuracy of 70 to 80%. And in Pokemon, having 80% accuracy means you've basically got a coin toss chance of hitting. Or at least it feels like that. I don't know, Pokemon math is messed up. On the other hand, some of the strongest physical attacks like Earthquake, Close Combat, and Outrage all have 100% accuracy. Frankly, it's rare to find a physical attack above 100 base power with less than 85% accuracy. Physical attackers also tend to have an easier time boosting their stats with moves like Swords Dance and Dragon Dance being widely accessible. Special attackers get moves like Nasty Plot or Quiver Dance, but not as many Pokemon gain access to them. I think the real question here is, why is everyone dancing so much? As a couple of other quick points, most of the priority attacks in the game are physical, and the Steel Fairy typing is much better to being a physical attacker. Fairy is slightly more specially oriented, but Play Rough is still a very strong physical move, and Steel has a total of three special attacks, four if you count Dynamax moves, and I'll be honest, none of them are great. All that is basically a very long-winded way of saying, yeah, we're making our attack the highest and we're dumping the special attack. If we're going for a heavy hitting Pokemon, then speed is probably the next most important. Sure, having good defenses is good for being able to take attacks, but a much better way to do that is to just one-shot whatever you're facing before they can hit you to begin with. Lastly, HP, defense, and special defense are all still pretty important. We want to be able to at least take a few attacks before going down, so, I'd say anything above 90 for those is good enough. We've got typing and base stats down, now let's move on to the attacks. 
Obviously, if our perfect Pokemon is a Steel and Fairy type, then we're going to want to have access to some strong moves in those types, like, I don't know, Play Rough, Iron Head, maybe a good setup move like Swords Dance, and then something for type coverage. Luckily, the Pokemon database has this nifty little tool that lets you select a bunch of types, and it'll show you how many Pokemon you can hit super effective, normal effective, and so on. With the setup we've got, having access to a good ground type attack will let us hit the most things super effective in the game, and pretty much everything else we can hit as at least normal effective. So, our perfect Pokemon will have plenty of strong stab moves, a good setup attack like Swords Dance, and then a few ground attacks peppered in for good measure. Are you starting to picture it in your mind yet? We've got a solid hitter on our hand, so all that's left is to give it a killer ability that'll tie the whole thing together. I contemplated giving it a great defensive ability like Intimidate or Multiscale or something, but ultimately I decided that we should play to the strengths we've already established and pick something that'll juice up our attacks even more. And there you have it. I've laid out all the pieces, and when combined, I think they make a skeleton for the truly strongest Pokemon imaginable. A physical powerhouse, quick as lightning, with the type coverage and ability to strike down nearly anyone in a single blow. And on the off chance someone survives an attack or outspeeds it, it's got the defenses and resistances to stick around to keep on kicking. Unfortunately, I'm not an artist, so I can't make some art or anything to help you better picture what this thing would look like, but I thought of a couple of design elements that seem fitting. Maybe I can paint a picture in your mind's eye real quick. It's a steel and fairy type, so I'm thinking some kind of like armored fairy tale creature. Something quick and devastating, maybe inspired by like, I don't know, the big bad wolf, werewolves, something along those lines. I said it should have access to swords dance, so it's gotta have some type of blade or sharp edges incorporated into its design somewhere. And this is a very powerful Pokemon. So it's got to be something divine looking with a very regal qualities about it. Maybe a nice like blue and gold color scheme. I think that would be nice. And there you have it. Like Dr. Frankenstein before me, I have constructed the perfect Pokemon. Something completely original. Something that would surely turn the whole competitive scene on its head as soon as it arrived. No!